Hello, welcome back. Um, been about a month, isn't it? Over a month since the um, IK Plus video on the Amiga. And um, I put on Twitter and also the community tab on YouTube that I was taking a bit of a break uh, for a while. But I've got a video for you today um, purely because I've, I've picked up a couple of bits. You can already see what they are in the title. And I'd just like to show them to you because um, I'm quite excited by them. Um, yeah, so you know, what's been happening basically, some health issues, um, nothing uh, dramatic or sinister, um, just that I came to light after results of some tests that I needed to make some sort of like lifestyle changes sooner rather than later, which included losing weight. As you can see um, from my previous videos, I've always been a bit on the large side and could do with um, uh, losing a, a few extra, well, <laughs> Not a few extra pounds uh, a couple of stone um, at least and in the last month i've lost about five kilos joining a gym uh going for walks cutting out sort of like midweek drinking and stuff like that so still chunky as fuck but um you know i'm moving in the right direction um uh, like i said nothing sinister but thank you everyone for all your um uh, well wishes etc um, you may also be able to see the first new edition. If we're friends on Facebook or you follow me on Twitter, you will already know about this. Um, I decided to get a tattoo. Um, I'd wanted one for ages. Uh, my wife, my boy and my youngest um, all have tattoos. And I always thought I was the wrong sort of body shape for it, but I'd always fancied um, getting one. But finally plucked up the courage a few weeks back to go down once everything had opened up after lockdown with my uh, wife who was planning to get another one and uh, I had nothing no idea really what I wanted um, so I said um, something related to Star Wars so the chap suggested oh let's do uh, Darth Vader so as you can see this is where we are the first part of the tattoo all this part of it's got to be finished and coloured in and stuff and background added. I'm not sure what exactly it is he's going to add, but I'm very, very happy with um, what he's done so far. We're sort of two weeks post um, the tattoo. It didn't hurt too bad. There are a couple of bits around here, a couple of areas around here were really pinched where it felt like he was um, like scraping my skin off. But other than that, it, um, it wasn't too bad at all. Uh, and afterwards, for the first couple of days, it felt as if I'd sort of like just brushed up against some stinging nettles um, or something. It was not painful at all. Um, we've gone through the, the sort of peeling phase, etc. It's gone through the being massively itchy phase and constantly having to sort of pat you on because you can't scratch it or anything like that. And putting loads of um, bepanthan cream on um, uh, sort of three times a day after washing it. And it's, um, you know, it's finally starting to die down. And I go to get it finished off in a couple of weeks' time. And I'm, like I say, I'm really sort of uh, pleased with it at the moment. Um, I did ask the question that I hoped um, you know, I wasn't the oldest person to have uh, received a tattoo in his shop, being uh, far closer to 50 than I am to 40. And he assured me that I wasn't. So uh, that was, but anyway, yeah, I've been um, still collecting. I'm still eventually, once I've, um, got myself um, uh, moving more steadily in the direction I want to go sort of like health wise etc like I said it, it, that's nothing sinister um, it's just the changes that need to be made sooner rather than later but I still keep an eye out for things uh, to collect etc and I've, I've done a couple of bits and pieces or picked up a couple of bits of pieces uh, since the last video which you can see um, you know what they are already, so we're just going to have a very, very quick look at them and a very, very brief chat. I am going to spin you around uh, now. There's going to be no cuts and stuff like that because I'm so shit with uh, video um, stuff. I don't know how to sort of edit things together just using the phone. Otherwise, I've got to take the SIM card out of the phone, put it in the computer and then do it that way through Windows Movie Maker. But to be honest, I can't be asked to do that today. So let's just spin you around and have a quick look at what we've got. Ah, Right, so let's just move this down a bit. Okay, so again, if you're, you and I are Facebook friends, um, or you follow me on Twitter or Instagram, I'm now on Instagram, um, you will have seen that a couple of weeks ago, I picked up this, the Acorn A3010. 
Um, it's a hefty, hefty beast of a machine, but um, absolutely wonderful. Um, I got this from my good friend Wayne, who um, lives across town from me, who's the chap I also purchased the uh, Amiga from recently. That I've, um, again, I haven't played on that for <coughs> a short while, but I've been really sort of enjoying owning that. I just love the design of the um, the Acorn uh, 3010. I keep being tempted to call it an Archimedes, but um, I believe from my research, the Archimedes name had been dropped by Acorn um, by the time that this particular variant of the machine came out. Um, and this was one of a number of um, packs that were released, um, focusing on gaming, sort of home productivity. This, I believe, is the publishing pack, judging by the wonderfully sort of tacky stickers there. Um, I This is the first Acorn machine that I've ever seen in real life. Uh, there's the serial number, as you can see. I believe this has got a bit of a strange motherboard as well. Um, Adelaide or something like that. Um, there's all the various ports on the back. Mouse ports, uh, SCART connectors, um, RF ports. Um, two joystick ports and I'm gonna be I'm gonna sort of like fess up and say that I don't really know how to review this machine everyone sort of like will know um, my main sort of focus of this channel has always been games and stuff um, I know there are a lot of games that were released for the Archimedes and that I don't have any I don't have anything that I can show you at the moment but um, As a, an actual sort of like machine in itself, I'm a bit sort of like stuck as to how best to sort of like go about um, describing its history and stuff like that. Now, if you want to know the sort of ins and outs, the details, etc., um, of the machine, then please, please go and check out Nostalgia Nerds video from um, a couple of years back. I will link that in the description below because it's it's far more in depth and detailed and will give you a lot more information than I ever will be able to. Um, I do intend, uh, there's a couple of bits and pieces I still need before I can get this um, 3010 up and running. Um, I've got the user guide, which is in very good condition, as you can just, just sort of like try and show you that. Now, were you familiar with the A3010? Um, I believe original Archimedes machines were kind of continuation of the BBC Schools project and had um, branding, etc. Um, but like I said, the Archimedes name seems to have been dropped at some point down the line. But like I said, um, go and check out um, that video that I've linked in below if you want to see a full history of this machine. Now, were you familiar with it? Um, I know that it's a very well thought of machine, especially from uh, <coughs> reading in uh, various Acorn groups or reading in an Acorn group, etc. And everyone seems to be very, very happy about um, the condition of this particular machine. Now, Wayne has fixed the um, battery leak problem that uh, most of these old computers, such as the Amiga, which he also did the same for, <coughs> suffered from. And this is the operating system guide. Look at that. It's a big old beast of a book, isn't it? Um, for the RISC OS3 um, operating system that this machine uses. Uh, that's not quite a five minute read, I don't think. But so again, here's the sort of question. Are you familiar with the Acorn uh, machines, these particular machines? Um, this one, it's sort of like successors, etc. What is your um, exa sorry, experience of RISC OS? Um, was it a great operating system or indifferent or completely pants? Um, how also does this stack up alongside the rivals of the, t I say rivals, I use that in sort of like speech marks, other computers of around the same time like the Amiga and the Atari ST, was it a viable alternative to them? Um, like I said, I don't know an awful lot about this machine. Now, I've mentioned <coughs> I need a couple of bits and pieces in order to complete this set. Um, the operating system is mouse um, operated. You can't just use any old mouse. There's a sort of special design 
mouse that Acorn developed that you can only use that mouse with um, uh, the A3010. But there have been after um, market solutions developed in, in sort of like recent years that will allow you to use any old USB um, mouse with the A3010. And I have one here that I've uh, sourced. This is called the Smallie Bus 2 interface, I think this is. I can't remember what one it was I bought. I think it was the 2. And as you can see, it's got a connector that sort of like just slots into the mouse port and then will allow me to use, when I get one, a USB mouse with the Acorn. I believe it was a three button mouse, the original one, so I'd ideally look for one of them, but I will be sourcing one of them soon. Um, I also need either an RF lead or a SCART lead um, that's compatible with an Archimedes. I don't have one as yet. I knew that um, there wasn't one when um, collecting it, so you know I've not been turned over or anything like that. I know that I've got to source that. I'm just wondering if I can use <clears throat> just an old one out of uh, an old spare Spectrum RF lead I've got. But I will try and look for a SCART lead if um, if possible. Now, as to the design of the thing, other than this sort of like garish sticker, that's not the worst of the stickers that I've seen on um, some of these uh, computers. This has got a fair old um, weight to it because the power supply and everything is um, built in. Unlike the Amiga, which the, the power brick is separate. Um, and I actually prefer it sort of built in because the Amiga does take up a bit of desk space that I haven't really got. Well, I have got it. I just have to move things about. But I love the sort of keyboard on it. It's really sort of like nice and um, clicky and sort of responsive. It's a really nice colour. It's in very, very good condition. He hasn't retro brighted this or anything. Um, it assures me that the uh, disk drive um, does work. Um, and I believe that uh, you can use any kind of format three and a half disk disk drive on it. Sorry, floppy disk on it. I'm not really sure what I'm talking about there because that's a bit techno babble, and I'm not very good at that at all. But yeah, um, it's a very very nice looking machine. Like I say, I don't know an awful lot about it or the range. Or the concept behind it um, but yeah I'm very very happy uh, to own that and I'm looking forward to um, getting to getting to see what it can do um, like I say I might have sort of like done it a, an injustice as I'm only sort of like really a games that, that's all my sort of interest is really and you know if a machine has other strengths and I don't sort of like comment on them I kind of feel that I'm doing the machine a disservice by sort of like misreporting, misrepresenting it. I mean, it might not be tremendously well overpresented um, games-wise. I mean, there were certainly plenty of them, the likes of Elite, Cannon Fodder, um, and other ones that escaped my mind. Uh, now I've forced myself to try and think about them. But I'm not sure of how prolifically um, games were released for it. Uh, right, so that's the uh, dog's just choking over there. You all right, boy? Yeah, we've had a, he's had a bit of a problem uh, recently, some kind of bronchitis illness thing. Now, the second one is something I've picked up off uh, Facebook Marketplace, and as you can see, it's the Sinclair Flat Screen Pocket TV. Now, I remember these from um, way back, absolutely years back. I would have been about 10 or 11 when these first started being advertised and thinking <coughs> how cool they looked and never got one i don't think uh, it wasn't the first flat screen pocket t or flat screen tv that uh, sorry pocket tv that sinclair um released but um i'm far more familiar with this one than i am the other one which is uh, like a, a a much different design but this i got from i've picked it up today actually from facebook marketplace um, I don't use eBay. I've always been sort of like put off by some of the horror stories you hear of um, of people 
um, getting ripped off and you know people trying to take advantage of you and stuff like that so I've always kind of steered clear of it and marketplace every now and then I sort of flick through and um, I picked up the Amiga from there I saw that advertised on there uh, the 3010 wasn't on marketplace but obviously I knew um, Wayne who had who had it in his possession and was uh, one of his projects to fix up and when he was complete he offered it um, to me offered me the opportunity to buy it but the um, pocket tv came up uh, i think it was thursday evening again local just on the other side of town so i thought oh okay let's have a sort of look at that and i put an offer in the the, uh, the lady accepted it and i went and picked it up today the story is she doesn't think it was ever used um her late father got this when he was when he bought a new car and they were giving uh, these away. Now, I remember seeing adverts and stuff for them giving Spectrums and stuff away if you bought a new car as well. I can't remember what brand of car it was, but I thought that was really interesting. But as far as she's aware, this was never, ever used. And it's in really good... Oh, I'm just trying to get this in the right sort of without making you feel seasick. Um, really good sort of condition. And I'll just do a quick unboxing and show you it. So, so around the side, you've got the sort of adverts, uh, sorry, the, the name. It says exactly the same on that side too. And on the back, all of this stuff is here in the box. Let's just get it focused. You can see we've got the TV, we've got the carrying case, we've got the uh, ba battery, uh, we've got earphones, and we've got the instructions for use and warranty card. Now, I don't know if these still work at all now. I wouldn't have thought so. Um, but there may well be some kind of <coughs> high-tech jiggery-pokery about that allows it to be used. Now, I find these things fascinating because now we take it for granted, the fact that we can buy a cheap phone uh, for less than 100 quid and we can sit on a train and we can watch films we can watch videos we can watch uh, music videos tv shows um, documentaries all sorts back in 1983 the only option for uh, what viewing on the go was things like this and i don't know what other kind of um things were available let's um just get this unboxed now well, yes, she's a lovely lady, lovely lady that um, I picked this up from. I had, had a good old chat with her for about 10 minutes while I was on the doorstep. Social maintaining, being observed, social distancing, of course, being maintained. So I've just taken it out of the box there, as you can see, and here we have the thing in its polys. And if we, which way is it? If we take that off, we've got the, ah, the guarantee card for Timex in Dundee. We've got your instructions. Shows you how to take the, the battery out, etc., and pop it in. Proper replacement in instructions on how to use it. Little kickstand thing at the back. You know, this is 30 odd years, uh, 35 years before a Nintendo Switch. Um, I think Game & Watches used to have them as well. A little sort of like metal clip thing that came out. And then here, so we've got the, um, the earphone that came with it for uh, use with the system. Here we've got this little sort of foam carry case for the TV with a Sinclair branding on it and let's just unsheath that and there we go now I think that's a lovely design really really nice design so we have our uh, on off and volume controls and our tuning sort of button there which would let us scroll through and find whatever fuzzy TV station we wanted to Nice click on the uh, on off and volume control. You see we have the screen there. Now from my limited sort of like research and sort of like knowledge, um, the previous uh, Sinclair 
um, Pocket TV was much, much sort of like deeper that way because the CRT function, uh, sorry, um, was housed at the back here on this one. It's housed at the side and it kind of fires in from um, the side. Uh, we have the aerial that um, can extend and obviously help you know, remember the old pocket radios from back in the day? Everyone, football terraces had those, listening to halftime scores and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's in lovely condition. Lovely condition. So, here we are round the back. There's the little kickstand. And is that a serial number in there or something? I don't know. Uh, some writing on there. Yeah, don't take it apart. This bit in here, and this sort of like slot on the side, is where the sort of battery goes in and out of. And it's a very slim affair, as you can see. To remove it, you just push it away with there. Now, there isn't a battery in this, but there was one came with it. Uh, he says, if he can find it. Oh, there it is. Right. So this is a Polaroid. It comes in a Polaroid disc uh, box, but I'm just wondering whether or not it, that was because it's just a slim, you know, it's a snug fit. The disc film disc cases were a snug fit. And here is the battery. Now, I'm fairly confident you won't be able to get these anywhere anymore. And I'm loath to sort of try whacking it in there. As it is bearing in mind, this is 30 odd nearly 40 years old um yeah i'm loath to sort of like try putting any kind of strain on that i don't know about batteries and how they work um whether or not it will blow something up etc but i'm very 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 happy to now um own that it was something that i'd been on the lookout on and off for a while not massively sort of like worried if i didn't get one but as soon as this popped up i couldn't really believe my luck and you can see you know, this does appear to be in sort of fantastic um, condition, as if it's never been used. Okay, so, thank you ever so much for watching that um, boringly long video. Um, thanks for sticking by me um, and being patient over the last few uh, weeks, the last month or so. It's really appreciated. Thanks for all the messages of support. It's not my intention to give up completely. It's my intention to get back to things as soon as possible. Um, it's just that I've got other things to concentrate on at the moment that the time it takes to create videos, setting systems up, putting things together, putting it all together um, is time I could be spent at the moment doing other things, um, as I explained. So, thank you ever so much for watching. If you like the video, please let me know. If you wish to subscribe, please do so. But if you do subscribe, please, please, please take the time to join in the conversation because that's what it's all about. Thanks ever so much for watching. Take care. Goodbye.